Hey, I'm Jesse. We're in Nehemiah and we're looking at chapter three. Your curriculum is gonna come from chapter four, which is gonna deal with some of the backlash that Nehemiah and the team were facing. So be sure to join a small group if you're not a part of one. Uh, if you're using JCM content, I mean, all the more reason to, to join a small group because we're gonna get through this list of names and portions of the wall that was rebuilt and then you're gonna actually get to a portion of narrative story, action unfolding, and you're gonna miss out because you're not in a small group. So Nehemiah chapter four tells the story of all this progress that's being made and now you've got enemies who are opposed to it. That's like always the case. It's always the case. Let's pick up where we left off. We're heading toward the season of opposition, but right now in chapter three, we're still trucking and you're seeing people show up in a big way and volunteer of their time and their resources to give and to work and to accomplish something that is incredible. Here's verse 20 of chapter three of Nehemiah. After him, Baruch, son of Zabai, diligently repaired another section from the angle to the door of the house of the high priest of Eliashib. Beside him, Merimoth, son of Uriah, son of Hakaz, made repairs to another section from the door, door of Eliashib's house to the end of his house. And next to him, the priests from the surrounding area made repairs. After them, Benjamin and Hashub made repairs opposite their house. Beside them, Azariah, son of Messai, son of Ananiah, made repairs beside his house. After him, Benuai, son of Henadad, made repairs to another section from the house of Azariah to the angle and the corner. Palau, son of Uzai, made repairs to the opposite of the angle in the tower that juts out from the king's upper palace by the courtyard of the guard. Beside him, Padiah, son of Parush, made the temple servants living in Ophel, uh, sorry, and the temple servants uh, living in Ophel made repairs opposite the water gate toward the east side of the tower that juts out. Next to them, the Tekoites made repairs to another section from a point opposite the great tower that juts out as far as the wall of Ophel. I recommend you have a study Bible. I use my, my favorite study Bible developed so far is the CSB study Bible. Yes, I was on the team that helped launch this Bible, uh, but no, I don't receive royalties from it. That's a question that I get sometimes. Uh, no, I was one minuscule member of a colossal team of people uh, uh, that, that like just, just launched the Bible. I wasn't even on the translating team. It was just, I was there at the very end of the translation phase and into the, you know, phase getting it ready to go out. So that being said, I recommend this Bible. Uh, this is the CSB study Bible and it's got a beautiful map. So you can see just kind of where this is happening because it's hard for, a, for, it's hard to have a frame of reference. We talked about like the water gate and, and, uh, the, the, this section that juts out near the corner of the palace. And it's, it's hard to picture in your head. So I recommend getting this also, uh, the, the, uh, Bible Atlas put out by Holman. The Holman Bible Atlas is, is fantastic. Um, there's some other atlases as well. So if you're a visual learner like me, just get some pictures of this so you can get, get an idea of the sheer scale of this thing. Because this is a colossal, massive, massive, massive construction project. Uh, those of you who are, who are contractors or general contractors will know, you, you'll appreciate just how big a deal this really is. I mean, do you, the scale and the scope and the ground covered the the cost of the supplies and the the labor intensity of making it all happen and the master planning it took to make sure that these sections of walls met when they all came together it's really really impressive and this was thousands of years ago redemption church don't you think we can build a church building i like if they could do this we can we can certainly do that i'm, I'm amazed at this and I wanna point out one little thing that we read in this list of names. Forgive me again for, for botching some of this. I never speak Hebrew out loud. I just read it in my head. It doesn't matter if I pronounce it right in my head. I'm just trying to make sure I understand it properly. There was something here that was, that, that, that really, really sticks out. It's in verse 20. And it's the word diligently. That Baruch, son of Zabai, diligently repaired another section. He didn't just do it haphazardly. This, this is your section, man. All right, the section that goes from the angle to the door of the high priest. Okay, got the angle to the door of the high priest. That's your, that's your portion, okay? All right, Baruch. Now Baruch, that's your portion. You go repair that. And Baruch said, okay, this is my section. It's gonna be excellent. It's gonna be done with the utmost. I think that's beautiful. I can't wait to meet Baruch in heaven one day. 
Because, I mean, he just gets this little tiny shout out, doesn't he, in verse 20? In what would be arguably the most boring chapter of the entire book, he briefly gets this call out, but man, I respect that. This is your little piece of the wall. And he took that very, very, very seriously. Like wherever it is that you serve in your church, for example, would you serve diligently? My son, Austin, he's 11. He's already serving in the church. He helps run tech and part of our kids' ministry. And he takes that very, very, very seriously. I mean, you know, we, we use a curriculum and it's all pre-programmed. All he really has to do is hit the space bar. But I mean, he's 11 and like he takes it very, very seriously and wants to make sure that it's done well. And he, I, 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 see, I see Baruch in my son. I see that same thing. This is my section. I'm going to do it really well. If you run the coffee ministry, make sure it is the greatest coffee ever, especially in Seattle, because you're judged based on the quality of your coffee uh, here in Seattle. If, you're, if your ministry is just a driving ministry, would you make sure that your bus is always perfect and that everybody who steps on feels welcomed and that you drive perfectly and that nobody, nobody feels jostled by braking too hard or by a bump or what have you. If your ministry is musical, you make sure that you just show up to rehearsal with all of your music ready to go. If you serve in the hospitality ministry, you may be on mashed potato duty that week, but man, those mashed potatoes are going to have high quality butter and, and garlic and basil and rosemary and some Creole seasoning added in. Like I mean, you're, you're going to make sure that those potatoes are like lovingly serenaded as you prepare them. Like that, that's your portion of the wall to repair. This is your piece of ministry and it may not be the most grandiose or public or what have you, but it's going to be done really well. It's going to be done really well. Whatever it is that you give to the Revival Project Redemption Church, wherever it is that you serve in your ministry and whatever it is that you give, as you give, you give it with your utmost and you give diligently. I cannot wait to meet Baruch one day.